Hello and welcome once again to this STEER series by Dr. Amdekar's team. I am Dr. Tushar Maniar, pediatrician from Andheri, and I'll be talking today on indications and interpretation of antigen antibody test which we use in clinical practice. Since we also use some PCR tests which are not strictly speaking antigen and antigen tests but they are used for diagnosis of infectious diseases I would cover wherever they are relevant. So when we talk about antigen test strictly we are talking about a component whether it is a bacterial wall proteins, polysaccharides, etc. and not necessarily nuclear material which are used for PCR. On the other hand, when the host produces an, a, a response to the antigen that is called as antibody which are commonly tested are IgM, IgG and occasionally IgA. We also have some antigen antibodies which are produced and targeted not again foreign antigens but against naturally occurring substances in the body and we call them auto antibodies which are seen in autoimmune conditions. Let us look at the IgM antibody in particular that is usually early to arrive the first one on the scene its present its presence suggests acute or recent infection and generally goes away within few days to weeks but occasionally can persist for up to three months as well. On the other hand, IgG is a late arrival to the scene that suggests either an old infection or a recovery from the infection. Sometimes it will tell you about past exposure of to the infection and also may give us ideas about protection of diseases which are specifically either vaccine related or because of natural exposure related. A presence of IgG in those like measles, mumps, rubella, varicella, hepatitis A, B will give protection against future infections. The other important difference between IgM and IgG is that IgM does not cross placenta but IgG from maternal to newborn transplacental passage is possible. So if you see IgG in a newborn when you test for intrauterine infections we must remember that it could be or more likely to be a maternal IgG which has been passively transmitted. But if you see IgM positive in newborns, then you know that this infection is an acquired or congenitally transferred, but baby's own response to that particular infection. Let us look at some of the common infections that we use antigen antibody tests for. Let us look at dengue first. We all know that NS1 antigen test is now commonly used and it comes positive in the early days, more likely up to 5 to 7 days. Subsequently, the IgM dengue test becomes positive and the IgM titers are positive from day 5 to day 7 onwards, can be positive up to few weeks to even a month. And then you also have IgG which can come up by two weeks and then continue for life. Now there is a, an interplay when you see these reports together. So if you see IgM positive but IgG negative, you know this is a acute dengue infection and primary dengue means the first episode of dengue infection. On the other hand, if you see IgG and IgM both positive, it is more likely that you are dealing with a secondary infection. And especially if you see an NS1 antigen positive with IgM negative and IgG positive, then it is most likely that this infection is acute but secondary infection. And the importance is that there is a higher chance of complication with disease. There are few important points we must remember 
that in a secondary dengue, the levels of NS1 antigen are usually low and there is a chance of false negative when tested early. Similarly, the IgG in secondary infection, the levels are very high and they are early to come up. Let's look at chikungunya. We know that chikungunya IgM comes by day 5 to day 7, but it persists for up to 3 months. And on the other hand, if you want an early diagnosis, we have chikungunya PCR test, which will be able to make a diagnosis as early as day 1 or day 2 itself. An IgG chikungunya comes positive by 2 weeks and may persist for life. When we look at malaria, we know that blood smear is the most important and gold standard test to perform. But we all do rapid diagnostic tests because not everywhere the expertise is available. And there are two types of antigen tests that are used for malaria commonly. One is the histidine rich protein test and the second one which tests the, uh, the LDH test. The Histidine rich protein test requires approximately 100 parasitic parasites per microliter to become positive. It very good in detecting falciparum and it comes positive early on. But what are the limitations or care with that we need to take when we use this histidine rich test? Even after the active infection is controlled, if you cannot use this test to confirm whether the disease is gone or not, because the protein may be present up to two weeks and you will get a false positive report. Similarly, none of the rapid diagnostic tests for malaria can give you parasitic index or a confirmed diagnosis for mixed infections. Let's look at leptospirosis. And again here, a PCR test is now becoming more popular. The IgM level comes positive by day 5 and IgG is usually late to arrive. But in leptospirosis, many times we land up doing tests during the immune phase and you may see an IgG positive. Now, if you see the IgG level of very high of 1 in 800 or more, then you will say that this is likely to be a recent acute leptospirosis along with IgM positivity. The other test that we use commonly is EBV or infectious mononucleosis. And here we test for IgM against viral cuspid antigen of EBV, EB virus. And that comes positive again by day 5, day 6. Later on, by four weeks, you get an IgG, which is against EBNA, which becomes positive. And here again, the combination of IgM VCA versus IgG EBNA helps us in making a diagnosis on whether this is acute, chronic or a past infection. We must remember that we use these antigen antibody tests for checking for vaccine protection when we have students who are going abroad or if the past vaccine records are not available etc. And we commonly ask for tests like ANA for SLE and here again we need to be careful that to use ANA as a screening tool and confirm it with DSDNA before jumping to a diagnosis of SLE. Similarly, we have been doing IgG IgMs for infectious conditions. Now, there is a condition of autoimmunity that is celiac disease where we do IgA levels of TTG and anti-TTG or anti-endomycial antibodies. Now, we have talked about where we do these things. So, we must know where we do not use this. So, please remember that TB antibodies have no place in clinical science today. Similarly, we should all forget to do Vidal test because of its low specificity sensitivity and similarly we have better tests available for conditions like brucella and other conditions so we should not be using those outdated tests. When we do these tests we have issues of 
false positive and false negative. So false positive is commonly because of cross reactivity. And so when you are doing IgG, IgM for dengue and it comes positive without a clinical picture, remember that uh, there could be cross reactivity due to Japanese encephalitis or Zika virus or also sometime after a yellow fever vaccination. Similarly, chikungunya positivity can be there because of a cross reaction from a, an existing dengue infection. Similarly, you have Vidal where you have multiple germs which can give rise to a false positive test. Another interesting point to remember is whenever you have a patient who has rheumatoid factor positive, Rheumatoid factor can interfere with tests like rapid tests for malaria and many other serological tests. When do we have false negative tests? If you do a test too early or if the test is done in the window period, that means the IgM has not yet mounted, then you are likely to miss out on it. There is also a situation where there is too much of antigenemia, like in malaria with severe infection. There could be a prozone effect wherein you get a false negative report. And of course, poor labs, poor transport, etc., can also lead to false negative reports. So, friends, to summarize, let us remember antigen tests are good to do early. IgM, when positive alone without IgG, tells us this is an acute new onset infection. If you have IgM and IgG both positive, then it could be a past infection with recurrence. If you have only IgG present and no IgM present, beware that this could be a protection, past infection or a maternally transmitted IgG level. And finally, whenever you send a test, make sure you know about the specificity, sensitivity, indications and its limitations. Thank you very much for your time and patience.